Live from Philly at the DNC. One last night, House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi says she thinks she knows why white men who didn't go to college are voting for Donald Trump. She said that. Watch. So many times white um, non-college education, educated white males have uh, voted Republican. They voted against their own economic interest because of guns, because of gays, and because of God. The three G's, God being the woman's right to choose. Uh, that is softening. Uh, some of those people were never going to be voting Democratic anyway. This is not the first time we've heard this theory. Back in 2008, then-Senator Barack Obama made similar remarks on the campaign trail about working-class people who live in economically depressed areas. And then he said this. It's not surprising then that they get better and they cling to guns or religion or uh, antipathy towards people who aren't white. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the president of Naral Pro-Choice America, Elise Hoag. I am a fourth generation Texan. Texas women are tough. We approach challenges with clear eyes and full hearts. To succeed in life, all we need are the tools, the trust and the chance to chart our own path. I was fortunate enough to have these things when I found out I was pregnant years ago. I wanted a family, but it was the wrong time. I made the decision that was best for me, to have an abortion and get compassionate care at a clinic in my own community. And the people who so loudly oppose abortion rights, let me let you into their dirty little secret. They're not only against abortions. Many of these people are also fighting to restrict access to contraception and block common sense policies to support working moms. It's not abortion that bothers them. It's empowering women to live our own lives. And that's right. And when we have power over our own destiny, we not only strengthen our families, we honor our most cherished traditions of liberty and equality. The Democratic Party reached a milestone on Thursday, even before Hillary Clinton gave her big speech. 25-year-old Sarah McBride became the first transgender person to speak at a major party political convention. My name is Sarah McBride, and I am a proud transgender American. Will we be a nation where there's only one way to love, only one way to look, and only one way to live? Or will we be a nation where everyone has the freedom to live openly and equally? A nation that's stronger together. Hillary Clinton understands the urgency of our fight. She'll work with us to pass the Equality Act, to combat violence against transgender women of color, and, the end, and to end the HIV and AIDS epidemic once and for all. I've been in bathrooms that are for men and women, but never in a public arena like this. So it was fun just to walk in and look at the bathroom and see it's just a normal bathroom. Yes. And that there's nothing strange about it at all. It makes a very poignant message right now, a very political message. As people get more comfortable with it, it's, it's going to be second nature. I find it pretty appalling that people in our society want to separate bathrooms for transgender, anything. Once you experience it and you're actually in the restroom, I, I don't think it's a, a really big deal at all. You go in your stall, you do your thing, I go in my stall and I do my thing, you know? Hey, we don't worry about each other, we love each other, right? On Thursday, severe thunderstorms blanketed the eastern half of the country, and the clouds were headed straight for the northeast, right for Philadelphia. The storms are expected to hit the Philly area on Friday, just as Democrats are set to leave their national convention on Friday morning. Already, many of the protesters were being washed out due to heavy rain. The Philadelphia area has a flash flood watch in effect until Friday morning, making it difficult for delegates, journalists, and party leaders to make 
make it to the convention hall to hear Hillary Clinton's acceptance speech tonight. Brazil truly is a vibrant society. This behind me might look like a party. It's actually a protest. These people are demonstrating against what they say is police brutality and discrimination against homosexuals. With the Olympics coming to town, it's widely said that this might be the worst place in the world to be gay. It is part, say the organizers, of an ongoing trend of discrimination. During Carnival, we hear cases of women being forced to kiss men. We believe that Carnival should be free. We support smaller events that are more respectful to diversity, to women, and to all kinds of minorities. Well, as it stands now, being transgender, according to the World Health Organization, is a mental illness. But that classification could soon change. The organization is preparing a new edition of the International Classification of Diseases, or ICD. Now, the Global Codebook influences disease diagnostic manuals worldwide. Proposals to declassify transgender identity as a mental disorder have been reportedly approved by each committee that has considered it so far. A study published this week in the journal Lancet Psychiatry has presented new evidence supporting the change. The current version of the ICD was endorsed in 1990. The newest edition is due in 2018. We've all heard blue lives matter, but in Brenham, somebody needs to tell them blue lunches matter too. See, a police officer and his kids went into this McDonald's last week. And when he approached the employee at the counter, she asked him, are you a police officer? Since he says, I'm not gonna serve law enforcement, and turns, turns away and walks away from him. For that to happen in this, in this community, in this town, it was just appalling. Why did it happen? Her son is, is currently in jail for a serious offense and she doesn't have a positive view of law enforcement here in Brennan. I mean, just because he's a police officer, uh, you can't take it out on him. If she were in a perilous situation, she would call the police to help her. And yet she's turned him away for service, and so it makes me very sad. Police officers are trying to do their job, and they shouldn't have to deal with none of that kind of stuff. Holding our police, who really are our protectors, responsible for the actions of a few is really unfair. Brennan police say they don't hold this against McDonald's, and why would they? As soon as they saw what was going on, another employee stepped in to serve the officer, and the boss eventually gave the cranky cashier the boot. This one incident, one employee does not represent the values or the behavior of the rest of the employees there at McDonald's. And by the same token. Just because an officer 3,000 miles away makes a mistake, it doesn't doesn't mean that all law enforcement officers are bad. Advice for that next cashier? I don't think that anyone should bring their uh, personal or political beliefs into the workspace. Yeah, let's stick to Big Macs and skip the big mess. You know, we have a bifurcated economy, and I think you don't have to go uh, too far to see the recent results of many companies in multiple industries, but the consumer brands and retailers that have all reported are beginning to demonstrate that there is significant pressure on the U.S. consumer. And, you know, Starbucks is not immune. We, we have to navigate through that. Uh, but the uncertainty and the anxiety and the cloud hanging over the American people as a result of the political situation, uh, I think, is adding to that level of uncertainty and anxiety, both for the consumer and in the stock market.
The DPRK is calling for the removal of U.S. troops from South Korea, describing it as a time bomb. The spokesman for the National Peace Committee of Korea accused the U.S. of sending a Patriot Pac-3 anti-ballistic missile battery for a military drill in South Korea. The official added that the U.S. troops stationed in South Korea would be the primary target of any DPRK strike. The spokesman also urged South Korea to change its pro-American policy and called for the withdrawal of U.S. forces from the peninsula. Last week, the DPRK fired off three ballistic missiles. The missile's launch came after six days after Seoul and Washington agreed to deploy the missile interceptor system FAD in Seungju County, some 250 kilometers southeast of Seoul, by the end of next year. German Chancellor Angela Merkel on Thursday described recent attacks in Germany and across Europe as shocking, depressing and terrifying, but refused to back down on her open-door refugee policy that has attracted criticism following three assaults in the country by asylum seekers. Merkel said, what the terrorists want is that we lose our view for what's important to us. Terrorists want us to lose the focus on the things necessary. They want to undermine our solidarity and our togetherness. They want to damage our weight of life, our openness, and yes, our readiness to take in people in destitution. They want to spread hatred and fear between cultures and religions. We stand decisively against this. President Francois Hollande has confirmed plans to form a national guard to help security forces combat terror attacks. Hollande's office said a defense council will be held early next month and will hammer out the forces hierarchy and command structure. Parliamentary consultations will follow later in September. The National Guard will be made up of volunteers from the police, paramilitary police and military. The president added that he hopes it would be operational by early autumn. The announcement came after France suffered two attacks in less than a fortnight this month, with the government coming under fierce criticism for alleged security lapses. An investigation has revealed more than a billion dollars worth of weapons is flowing from Europe to Middle Eastern countries that are known to ship arms to Syria. The investigation was conducted by the Balkan Investigative Reporting Network and the Organized Crime and Corruption Reporting Project. It has revealed that since the start of the Syrian conflict, more than a billion dollars worth of weapons has been exported to Saudi Arabia, Jordan, the United Arab Emirates and Turkey. The report examined arms export data, UN reports, plane tracking and weapons contracts. Now, the Russian army has strengthened its southern defenses in response to NATO's growing military presence near the country's borders. Firstly, we will consider the issue of improving the firing strengths of the troops out of southern military district. In the last years, the military political situation in the southwestern strategic direction became more sensitive. Mostly, it is connected with the growing military presence of NATO in Eastern Europe, the situation in Ukraine and the activity of international terrorist groups. Since 2013, more than 200 organizational steps have been taken in the southern military district. Four divisions, nine brigades and 22 regiments were formed, including the creation of two missile brigades equipped with Iskandarim complexes. The number of contract troops doubled. A self-sufficient group of forces was deployed in Crimea. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu made those remarks during a meeting of military officials in Moscow. Meanwhile, Romania is calling for the formation of a NATO brigade to be based in the country. Six NATO members, including Poland and Bulgaria, would take part in the task force, which was agreed at the Western Military Alliance's summit earlier this month. NATO has beefed up its military presence in Eastern Europe despite repeated warnings by Russia. The ties between Moscow and NATO have soured since the beginning of the Ukraine crisis in 2014. The alliance blames Russia for the deadly conflict. The Kremlin denies the accusation. China's military has said it will hold joint exercises with Russian forces in the South China Sea. Beijing says the air and sea drills will be held in September and are aimed at deepening relations between the two militaries and boosting their capacity to respond to maritime threats. The announcement of the exercises comes following a recent arbitration ruling that rejected Beijing's claim to almost the entire strategic body of water. China says the exercises are not aimed at any third parties. Chinese ships have challenged vessels from the U.S., the Philippines and other nations in the disputed waters. China considers the tribunal's ruling earlier this month to be invalid.
Reindeer herding is a way of life in nomadic Siberian communities of Russia, but they are not immune to the heat wave that's spreading across the world. The weather has thawed an anthrax-infected reindeer carcass and sparked an outbreak of the disease. Thirteen members of a nomadic Siberian community have been hospitalized, and around 1,500 of the animals have died from the highly infectious disease since Sunday. The animal in question was thought to have died decades ago. News right now at 11. People all across the West Coast are seeing this light up sky. The big question is, what is it? It streaked across the night about an hour ago. And it was big enough that many people caught it on camera. Jackie Johnson has been tracking it all on social media. And Jackie, do we know what it is at this point? Uh, we do not. And Paul and Pat, as you know, I'm pretty excited because I saw it myself tonight. So again, as of right now, there is no official word on what it was, but I just spoke to the National Weather Service and they say it is not weather related. And Vandenberg Air Force Base tells us that they did not have a launch tonight. So take a closer look. People have been tweeting out video from as far away as Utah tonight. We've heard from people in Lancaster and Riverside who saw it. It definitely looked like a giant ball streaking across the sky with a long tail, and then it appeared to break up with smaller pieces trailing behind it. It was definitely a bright and beautiful sight that created a lot of excitement, including for me and for those who saw it. Whoa! Oh, so cool. oh, so oh, Dude, This is unreal. How's this for a nasty hailstorm? See that hole through that window? That's in Kersey, Colorado, and that is from hail. They had everything from quarter size to golf ball size hail. Check that out. Now, this was all the same storm. It went through the plains, so Colorado, Wyoming were all hit by the same system. And it wasn't just large hail, but also wind-driven hail. Doesn't that look like straight-up slush right there on the road? That's all from hail that was melting. Now, after the storm, of course, it's quiet and pretty. And check out that rainbow that formed. All right, so come look at this video. This is very unusual. Um, this is in South Africa. In the middle of winter, a tornado. So, of course, in Southern Hemisphere, they are in the middle of winter. Um, this one, unfortunately, did cause injuries to 20 people, damaged a hospital and a shopping center. You know, July is not the month where you would get tornadoes in South Africa. It does happen here throughout the year, but not normally in July. It's the month with the fewest number of tornadoes.